All right, so on to the next step, which is designing the flanges um, that will seal against the M65 superchargers uh, openings. Um, so seen here are two of the gaskets intended for the supercharger. The larger one is for the output um, of the unit. Um, my plan there is to cut this into a square. This is eighth inch aluminum. Uh, use a hole saw to drill a two and a half inch opening. Then to position the elbow on that opening and use a brazing rod to pretty much join these two together. Um, at that point, I'll have something ready for the outlet of the supercharger. This smaller one is the diverter opening where the factory diverter valve, which looks a bit like a throttle body, it's basically a bypass to allow the supercharger to, I guess, send air uh, in a circle. Um, there's a, a separate opening, which is the inlet itself coming from the air filter. And that's also where I'm gonna put the NAF sensor uh, just between the filter and the um, non-boosted side of the supercharger. These two barbs, this is a one inch barb and a three eighths inch barb. I'm going to try to fix to the flange I make for this diverter um, opening. And their purposes are, this is where I'm gonna send my um, recirculated blow off valve uh, output. This is free supercharger. And then this is the kind of clean air PCV breather uh, for the engine. So this used to uh, have a hose that went from the crankcase up to just before the throttle body. Um, in this case, it's going to go all the way out to just before the supercharger so that it's not under pressure. Um, and yeah, this comes in handy where, you know, in some cases the engine is pulling a vacuum from the intake manifold and it starts drawing a vacuum out of the crankcase and the crankcase needs to pull in air to relieve that pressure. And um, we wanna make sure that that air is metered. So this is gonna be post math, but it will also not be under pressure. So it's free supercharger. All right, so I'll be marking all these holes, making some cuts and then brazing and we'll uh, tune back in once I'm there. Quick status update after marking and drilling the bolt holes. Um, over on the left for the smaller diverter valve flange, those are for M6 bolts. And over on the right for the larger outlet flange, those are for M7 bolts. Okay, and here are these little squares after cutting them uh, out of the larger sheet. Uh, for the cutting, I used a hole saw for the um, aluminum larger holes and I used a uh, fine-toothed miter saw for um, actually cutting the aluminum, cutting straight lines in it. So yeah, hopefully this uh, works out with those gaskets and then I'll be next step will be brazing on the um, actual connectors. Just a side note, uh, after this attempted brazing, the joint did fail um, just from some of the pressure of installing clamps on the intercooler piping. Uh, the mistake I made here was trying to heat both pieces of aluminum at the same time, and the much thinner eighth inch aluminum plate uh, reached its uh, you know, critical temperature of eight or 900 degrees, enough to melt the uh, brazing rod well before the elbow reached the same temperature. So my advice to anyone doing this with brazing is to make sure to heat the thicker part first uh, and then heat the smaller part. You'll have a much stronger joint. All right, since I'm taking some things apart to clearance for the two PCV and blow-off related uh, fittings, I wanted to show you what I did to actually secure this. So at the bottom, this is the original bolt, the shorter one, that goes into that fitting. I believe it's like a fine or, fine or a medium fine threaded M10. Um, and then I welded on a 
much longer bolt going the opposite direction, so basically bolt head to bolt head, and then that is what secures at the top, and it's also what I use to drive this in. Um, I think this whole support could have been better designed. Um, it's still a little bit flexible back there, but I think it's good enough. And anyway, that's uh, just one idea for y'all to uh, riff off of. The build is starting to uh, come together. The last few steps will be to position the air intake out here um, to fully uh, complete this uh, kind of hot side charge piping down to the intercooler. Um, and for that, one of the things I need is from this silicone elbow to that silicone elbow going into the intake uh, of the supercharger, I need a short length of aluminum tubing. So I've just uh, cut one and I wanted to show my method. So here on the ground is the original pipe. It was this full length. I used an exhaust pipe cutter like this to cut the section off. And then to make a bead, this took me maybe a minute um, using this tool. These are just uh, Harbor Freight wire strippers and, uh, well not strippers, just wire cutters and uh, crimpers. Um, basically, you can, using this uh, crimping nub, put the tool through a section of aluminum pipe and more or less, Clamp down, if the camera will focus. As I clamp down, it forces that little bit of aluminum up and out. So I end up with this kind of a, a bead, so to speak. But yeah, so then this section will fit right in here. And then I'll put a clamp over it. And then the intake We'll fit over the unmodified end once I tilt this downwards and sit somewhere out here behind the headlight. Mostly done with the connections to the supercharger. So uh, to recap, that elbow is the outlet. Back here, these two hoses. The blue one that's about an inch in diameter, that is the recirculating blow-off valve. The black one, it's about three-eighths or one-half diameter, that one goes to the factory crankcase breather port. So it was important to connect that to um, the low pressure side of the supercharger so that it can pull in additional metered air past the, uh, the MAF sensor right here. Um, what else is interesting? So here's the recirculating blow-off valve. The hose takes quite a circuitous route uh, around, down, and then finally up to that fitting. Uh, ended up being very tight, so sending a hose this way would have immediately kinked. Um, it has a port uh, that's intended to see either boost or vacuum um, that's connected to this formerly capped port on the intake manifold. And it also has another very small port that I need to plug. This is basically just going to act like a leak to um, this pipe. So it would actually let in a bit of unmetered air, for example. So <laughs> I actually don't know if I have a plug small enough for this, but I'll, I'll figure something out. The charge pipe is fully secured, both the cold side and the hot side. I plugged this little um, nipple at the bottom of the blow-off valve. Uh, just one more once over. Um, worth noting, some of the hoses uh, were pretty loose on the intake manifold, and if they're never meant to see pressure, um, I was worried they'd pop off, so I added a hose clamp here and a hose clamp down there. This is the EVAP line, I believe. Oh, all right, well, I think that's it. Okay, garage is open, still on the stock math. Uh, nothing changed in the tune. Let's just see if it will idle um, with the supercharger. And then if I can look at a manifold air pressure gauge, maybe give it a rev, see if the uh, manifold air pressure exceeds like 14 or 15.
you idling at all. I bet this thing will go down the street, no problem. All right, so right now I'm riding the flash for the three bar map sensor that I just installed. Right here in the intake manifold. Um, I got the scaling and offset from uh, Ecutech's website. So I uh, should be able to verify once the flash is complete, even without starting the car, that it's reading, you know, around 14.3 PSI. Um, just sitting here. There we go, perfect. This is the three bar map sensor. It's reading 14.3. Before I rescaled it in the tune, it was, was reading 4.6. Um, because the sensor's reading about a volt and a half. That corresponded to 4.6 PSI, absolute depth pressure, with the uh, stock map. And now with the three bar map, Got the correct. So another check I want to do before I button up the front bumper is what's called a smoke test. So this is a smoke testing machine. It's basically a paint bucket with a heating element like a resistor at the bottom that's connected to a car battery. It gets red hot and it starts burning the mineral oil that's in there and then that produces some smoke. So as you can see there's a trail of smoke coming out at low pressure. So I'm going to connect this to that uh, blow off valve line, which is connected to the intake manifold. So that's connected now. So the intake manifold should be filling with smoke. The throttle body is closed, um, should be oriented just like this. Um, but as you can see, there is a very small opening on the top and bottom that should let the smoke pass. So we'll see if that works. That should fill the charge piping all the way through to the hot side, all the way up to the blow-off valve and the supercharger, and ultimately out the air filter. So I'll let it fill up and then we'll see if there's anything to note. Okay, so after a minute or so, we do have smoke coming out of the air filter. So now we know the entire intake system is filled with this smoke. And now, you can look for smoke coming out of anywhere else. If the intercooler is leaking, I honestly <laughs> wouldn't be surprised. Let's see here. There is a little bit of smoke down here, I just don't know where from. Let's see what else we got. Hmm. Honestly, it looks really good. Just to illustrate what a boost leak would look like, let me take this hose off what happens. Right there. We got a lot of smoke spewing out of here. Close that up. 